Everyone, welcome back to video number three in our sales pipeline series. Last video, we talked about contact record and opportunity record, and there was a whole lot contained after Tyler and I made and We didn't video. even really scratch the surface. No. <laughs> no, after we were done with that video, we're like, wow, there's, there's a lot there, and we just, you know, very high level on that. So in this video, what we wanted to do is dive into the computer a little bit and show you how to add some of those dashboard reports and why those are important to do. Yeah, absolutely. So the first thing is, um, if you're using opportunity records, this is super easy. If you're using Very contact easy. records, then you have to create individual safe searches for each of the stages and then put those on your dashboard. So we're going to show you the opportunity record way first. So on your dashboard, just go to add widgets. You, you'll recognize this because we did another video on dashboard reports. That's right. So we're back in the same spot. Yep. And then just scroll down and you're going to find this one here, pipeline stages. Again, if you're using contact records, you'll use custom statistics and then you're going to add a bunch of safe searches to that. But we'll do pipeline stages. And this will give you an idea, even if you're using contact records, this will give you an idea of what it's supposed to look like. Mm -hmm. So if I do pipeline stages, then it shows us automatically here, all of our stages, shows me exactly how many leads I have in each stage. Again, if you're using contact records, you want to recreate this whole thing. You just have to do it manually by creating all the safe searches, right? Cool. So the next thing is, um, if I'm a sales rep, then how do I do it? What how do, do I do it? What do I look at? How do I manage my leads? How do I work the deals? All that kind of stuff. Well, that's why you want this on your dashboard. Because the first thing you want to do when you come in each morning is look at your dashboard and start working your deals. Say, okay, I've got three new leads today. So I click on the three there and that'll show me my three new leads. Just so happens this is our test account. And so all these <laughs> happen to be me. <laughs> and it's super and red hot as well. Tyler Garns, Tyler again. <laughs> um, and so you can see uh, lead scoring. You can see we talked about uh, the projected revenue um, right. in our last video. You can see that number here. Um, and you can change which um, actual fields show up here just by editing criteria and changing the columns. Mm -hmm. um, but you can see the stage here as well. So this is a new lead. I'm going to call this person using this phone number right here. If I get a hold of them, great. Then I'm going to click on the pencil right here, and I'm going to change the stage to the next appropriate stage. Maybe I call them. We talk. They're like, hey, let's chat again on Thursday. I put them in appointment set, and I hit save, and we're off and running. Off to go. If I didn't get a hold of them, then I might just put them in ATC1. We call it ATC. That stands for attempted to contact. Yep. And that will actually automate follow-up to the person saying, hey, Bob or Tyler, <laughs> um, I, I tried to reach out and get a hold of you, I wasn't able to reach you, um, you know, here's my number, here's my link to schedule, you know, whatever you want to do. Now, quick note on yep. that, that's not in there by default. That's where you have to go into the campaign yep. and put the automation in there, and I think that's a, a, an important step that people overlook sometimes. Absolutely, you gotta build those pieces. Yep. So the stages, and this process of getting the stages on the dashboard, that's all kind of in there, you have to go in and define the stages, but all the automation, like I said, needs to be built by you, and it's very easy to build in uh, in a campaign. Now, what if I'm a sales manager or the owner of the business, and I want oversight on the whole team? How do I Great. see that? Great question. So I just walked you through how a sales rep would work these leads, and of right. course, when you move the stage, then you just hit save, and then you're on to the next lead. Right. So that saves you a bunch of time. But if I'm a manager and I'm not working the leads, mm -hmm then on my dashboard, I'm gonna put that exact same widget. Right. What I'm gonna do though is I'm gonna to go to the bottom, I'm gonna click on the settings, and I'm gonna make sure that this is set up for all users, where each individual sales rep will only have their own name selected, so they only see their own pipeline. But as the sales manager, I choose all users, and I may want to ignore certain stages, like maybe I don't care how many people are in Lost. You know, right. These are all of our old leads. Get rid of that. I can get rid of that one. I can rename this widget, whatever. But now I can see the whole entire team on here. Now, I think the last thing that's important to this, and we didn't talk about it in the other one, is can we briefly go into the pipeline settings yes. and show people how to rename the stages? You know, they, they know how to get it, they know where to see, but maybe they don't know quite how to rename those stages. Yep, if you're just getting into this, the first thing you need to do is set up your stages. So you go to CRM settings, and under CRM settings, you're gonna scroll down here to your sales pipeline. So the pipeline is where your stage is. The defaults will already be in there if you haven't touched them. Right. And uh, then you can create new ones. What we generally recommend, and you can see here, is that we order these by tens. Now this seems a little silly, right? In this day and age, we should be able to just drag and drop the stages to reorder them. But you can't drag and drop them to reorder them. So you have to give them an order number. And so if you order them by tens, then that gives you a little flexibility if you want to come in later and add a new step yep. or reorder, whatever, you can do that easily because there's gaps. Yep. If you had na named them or numbered them, you know, one, one two, two, three, three, four, five, six, seven, and you want to put in a new one at four, 
Then I got to move five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I got to move those each down one and put in a four. So it's a little bit weird. (laughs) Yeah, a little bit weird, but just number them by tens and then you'll be fine. Perfect. And then once we update it in here, you go down to the bottom, you hit save, and that automatically will update on your... Automatically in your opportunity records, they'll be all set to go. Awesome. Guys, if you have any other questions, please feel free to reach out to us or you can sign up for more videos on iloveinfusionsoft.com and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time, next next video. Yeah, stay tuned for our next one, our last one in this series, number four, is gonna be all about reports. And so as a manager, as the business owner, how do you actually look into the sales pipeline and see what's going on, know which of your reps are doing a good job, which ones maybe need to get, right. uh, I'm not gonna say fired, maybe a little encouragement. Coaching. Coaching, yes, yes. <laughs> that kind of thing. Um, so you can get some of that detail in the reports we'll talk about next time. Awesome. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.